Warnings have been issued in regard to the next worldwide health crisis. History says we are just months away from something major happening and we should all be prepared for it when it does. These dates are important. August 2002, July 2008, September 2011, September 2015, January 2016, March 2020, and now we're about to see history repeat itself in 2022. Stick around and get ready to prep up. You're not going to want to miss this one. I want to thank everybody for watching the videos and subscribing to the channel. And I also want to thank everyone who's submitted, commented, uh, ideas for the channel name, whether it should stay the same, whether it should change. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And please subscribe if you haven't already. More comments are rolling in and I know we're getting the message out to more smart and intelligent people just like yourselves who need truth honesty and a loving family and community to help navigate through these tough times. Like I said before, you guys are very smart and intelligent and you're able to take this information that I bring to you, which is readily available for all to see. You have to make your own judgment on where you're getting the information and the validity of the source, but I try to compile it and bring it to you and also share my opinion and some light on some certain things and connect some dots together so that we can be better prepared for tomorrow. Peter Sands, executive director of the Global Fund, is warning us all that the next worldwide health crisis could be just as deadly as an airborne pandemic if authorities fail to prepare. Australia is already beginning to see early signs of food stress as lettuce prices hit an incredible $12 per head. Price inflation is a big part of the problem, but natural disasters coupled with inflation and complications in the global trade industry could produce a perfect storm for us all and potential food shortages. With the biggest shortages coming after the Russia and Ukraine conflict resulted in sanctions and huge shortages of grain this year and beyond. Just a couple days ago, the UN warned the Ukraine invasion could cause worldwide food shortages. Ukraine's grain exports are down more than 60% when compared to last year. The Biden administration says there are more than 20 million tons of grain stuck in silos near Ukrainian ports blockaded by Russian soldiers. Global food prices are already increasing and the UN warns of worldwide food shortages next year if Russia continues to invade and attack Ukraine. Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of the world and is one of the largest producers of wheat, sunflower oil, honey, and other commodities that millions of people rely on for food and survival. Take heed of the warning signs that we're seeing here and that the use of food manipulation can prove to be a deadly weapon. Look at this picture here, showing shelves normally meant for baby formula sitting empty at a store in downtown Washington, D.C. And this image of a woman in Spain standing next to empty shelves during a truck driver strike against rising fuel prices that is causing massive shortages of some fresh products in supermarkets across the country. According to the AAA, gas prices remain above an average $5 per gallon nationally. An energy analyst said, we're likely to get record highs on U.S. regular gasoline this summer when demand typically peaks. And best guess, we peak around $5.50 per gallon. And senior equity trader for CIBC Private Wealth said, she doesn't think prices will rise substantially above $6 per gallon due to demand destruction. Demand destruction is basically not buying. It's basically the pullback of the consumer causing the product's supply to remain and the demand to decrease because it's just too expensive and people can't afford it and or refuse to pay the high price for it. And Kuwait's Alzor refinery is scheduled to come online over the next month, which should help ease some of the refining bottlenecks that are currently impacting gasoline prices. However, if it's Kuwait's refinery, you have to understand that it's not the US's refinery. So even if it does come online within the next month, I would expect there to be some form of turmoil or uh, new worldwide event that is going to prevent us from having access to this fuel and prevent our fuel prices, our gas and diesel prices from being lowered from their uh, record highs. Farmers are warning that record diesel prices could lead to food shortages in the U.S. Record setting prices on diesel fuel coupled with soaring inflation and the ongoing war in Ukraine could lead to food shortages in the U.S. 
Farmers rely on diesel to fuel their tractors and other heavy machinery used to plant and harvest crops. Feeling the squeeze at the pump, many farmers face with the tough choice of being forced to stop planting certain crops in order to save money on fuel. This in turn could result in higher food prices and even food shortages. The Farm Bureau said that if the farmers can't get the crops out of the ground, then there's no food on the shelves. Now, I heard that some farmers are opting to plant hay because it is more cost effective and more economical than planting corn or beans. Here's a shot of a Sunoco gas station. The average diesel prices from earlier this week were up 75% compared to last year, according to the AAA. If farmers can't afford the fuel to fuel their tractors to harvest their crops, Food production shortages will follow. It is time for the Biden administration to stop blaming the Russia-Ukraine war for the cause of oil, gas, and diesel prices skyrocketing and do something about it before we all starve to death. I don't see how this is a plan to build back better. But the good news is there's hope. According to Bank of America, history says the next bull market is just months away and it could carry the S&P 500 to the 6,000 level. Bank of America Global Investment Strategy advises that if the S&P equity benchmark hits 3,000, it is time to gorge. What does this mean exactly? The S&P 500 is largely considered an essential benchmark index for the US stock market. Basically, it means the market cap for each company and the total Standard & Poor's 500 outstanding stock shares in relation to the company's current market value per share is at its highest levels and essentially worth more money to investors. Right now, we're essentially in a bear market. Take a look at this chart. This Bank of America bull and bear indicator is signaling to buy. Bank of America saw this signal previously in August 2002, July 2008, September 2011, September 2015, January 2016 and March 2020. Currently, the S&P 500 is sitting right around 3,675. Bank of America Global Investment Strategy Chief Investment Strategist Michael Hartnett released the following statement. Positioning dire, but profits slash policy say nibble at an S&P 500 level of 3,600. Bite at 3,300. Gorge at 3,000. And per history, the average peak to trough bear market decline is 37.3% over a span of 289 days. Now, I know all this sounds like a foreign language. Trust me, I get it. But what is most important here is that matching that pattern that history has taught us to identify would put the end of the pain on October 19th, 2022, which happens to mark the 35th anniversary of Black Monday, which is the same date from 1987 when the stock market crashed. I don't know how many investors I have out there watching, but this is very valuable information to keep your eye on, especially as food prices and fuel prices continue to rise. If we happen to not see massive amounts of food shortages, food is still available. It is still going to be very expensive and costly to buy, especially uh, the cost that it's going to that you're going to incur just to earn the money by driving to work as gasoline and diesel continues to go up. I will also be including in the next video uh, some information about AB5, which someone commented or emailed. I can't remember exactly, but it's uh, basically it's a bill trying to be passed by California legislation that would essentially completely change the owner operator ability of truck drivers in the state of California, which would basically eliminate the ability to own and operate your own truck, which is already a losing proposition, but it would force these truck drivers to become employees only more than likely just completely turning the trucking industry in California upside down. So I'm going to cover that in the next video. Thank you for whoever shared that. I'm doing some research now to make sure I bring you guys the most accurate information on that. Also, link in the description to sign up for my newsletter that I will be releasing soon for those who are looking for ways to get better prepared and also want access to direct communication and individual consult as far as your prepping, whether it be food, uh, strategy, finance, business, whatever. I'm working on putting all that together. Ultimately, we can survive this together. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for helping the community overall. You guys are smart. You guys are very intelligent. You're going to make it through this. 
Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.